How can we terraform Titan? We'll know the answer in this video. So without wasting any time, let's get to the video. Saturn's largest moon Titan is one of several candidates for possible future colonization of the outer solar system. According to Cassini data from 2008, Titan has hundreds of times more liquid hydrocarbons than all the known oil and natural gas reserves on Earth. These hydrocarbons rain from the sky and collect in vast deposits that form lakes and dunes. Radar images obtained on July 21, 2006, appear to show lakes of liquid hydrocarbon, such as methane and ethane, in Titan's northern latitudes. This is the first discovery of currently existing lakes beyond Earth. The lakes range in size from about a kilometer in width to 100 kilometers across. On March 13, 2007, Jet Propulsion Laboratory announced that it found strong evidence of seas of methane and ethane in the northern hemisphere. At least one of these is larger than any of the Great Lakes in North America. Saturn is the most important and valuable of the four gas giants in the solar system, because of its relative proximity, low radiation, and excellent system of moons. He also named Titan as the most important moon on which to establish a base to develop the resources of the Saturn system. Titan possesses an abundance of all the elements necessary to support life. The atmosphere contains plentiful oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and methane. Additional to this, strong evidence indicates that liquid methane exists on the surface. Evidence also indicates the presence of liquid water and ammonia under the surface, which is delivered to the surface by volcanic activity. While this water can be used to generate breathable oxygen, more is blown into Titan's atmosphere from the geysers on the icy moon of Enceladus, also a moon of Saturn, as they start as water molecules and evolve into oxygen and hydrogen. Nitrogen is ideal to add buffer gas partial pressure to breathable air, it forms about 78% of Earth's atmosphere. Nitrogen, methane, and ammonia can all be used to produce fertilizer for growing food. Titan has a surface gravity of 0.138 grams, slightly less than the Moon. Managing long-term effects of low gravity on human health would, therefore, be a significant issue for long-term occupation of Titan, more so than on Mars. These effects are still an active field of study. They can include symptoms such as loss of bone density, loss of muscle density, and a weakened immune system. Astronauts in Earth orbit have remained in microgravity for up to a year or more at a time. It has been hypothesized that children born and raised in low gravity such as on Titan would not be well adapted for life under the higher gravity of Earth. The very high ratio of atmospheric density to surface gravity also greatly reduces the wingspan needed for an aircraft to maintain lift, so much so that a human would be able to strap on wings and easily fly through Titan's atmosphere while wearing a sort of spacesuit that could be manufactured with today's technology. Another theoretically possible means to become airborne on Titan would be to use a hot air balloon-like vehicle filled with an Earth-like atmosphere at Earth-like temperatures, because oxygen is only slightly denser than nitrogen. The atmosphere in a habitat on Titan would be about one-third as dense as the surrounding atmosphere, although such a vehicle would need a skin able to keep the extreme cold out in spite of the light weight required. Due to Titan's extremely low temperatures, heating of any flight-bound vehicle becomes a key obstacle. After that, we would terraform Titan like Mars. Yeah, some changes are required, because Titan is not Mars. That's it for today guys. Share the video with your friends.